Well, this one has been a long time coming. While this didn't necessarily factor into my decision to do this review, I will say that the Annoying Orange Cartoon Network show was one of my most requested things to review, like, ever. And upon watching an episode or two, I can see why. If you asked me what was the worst thing the Cartoon Network ever did, I'd say the problem solvers. But the biggest mistake they ever made was perhaps to put this show on the air. You see, at the time, Nickelodeon gave Fred, the most popular YouTube celebrity, a movie and his own television show. This worked out horribly. The movie was panned, the show bombed, and even the web series' reputation started heading down afterwards. For some reason, Cartoon Network wanted to rip off this brilliant move and gave a cartoon series to another rising YouTube concept, The Annoying Orange. What do I think about the web series? Well, it's about a character who has been titled Annoying. He spends most of every episode annoying other fruits until they brutally get killed by a knife. It's pretty much always the same, and most of the jokes were puns. Let's just say I really wasn't into it. However, I will say this. At the very least, the videos averaging around 3-4 to four minutes didn't overstay their welcome for what the show tried to do. So the best improvement that a network could make was to make each episode three times longer and slow down any sense of jokes or pacing to a screeching halt. Whatever I think about the web series, the Cartoon Network version is much, much worse. Let's start out with the most surprising thing that they made worse, the animation. I'm not talking about the backgrounds or anything, I'm talking about the character animations. How does a show with network backing end up looking like five times worse than something that was privately funded on the internet? The actual web series used real fruit and just sort of did a weird clutch cargo thing on them. Most of the show is made out of clip out animation and that never looks good ever. I've never seen it look good. Not once have I ever seen it look good. On top of that, this adds to the already creepy factor of just having live action faces hovering on top of fruit. Give Breadwinners this. At least the actual cartoon is animated better than the web version. Like most cartoons, this one has a theme song. It is absolutely terrible. I'm sorry, but your singing is just off. The lyrics are shit, and the genre is about 20 years out of date. This episode begins with all the fruit playing volleyball with Pear, this show's resident Megward the Wizard, looking for a place to rest. Yeah, you know most of the fruits the Annoying Orange has come across in his travels? Their fate ends up essentially being cut to pieces by a knife in a brutal fashion. This doesn't happen to Pear because it would be a lot nicer than forcing him to live around Orange. And apparently, beating a guy when he's down is the perfect recipe for comedy. Isn't that right, Eric? Oh no. Hey Pear, it's me, Orange! Yes, hi Orange. I get the point of the character is to have the orange as annoying as possible, I get that. And they have done an absolutely wonderful job. However, the point of the problem solvers was to have as many bright flashy colors as possible, and they did a wonderful job with that as well. Hey Pear, what you doing down there? It's not even fall yet! <laughs> get it? Fall? But he didn't even fall. That pun makes no sense. And here we get to the most major problem in the show, the one you could have seen from a mile away. Almost every single joke in the show is a pun. A terrible pun. It's terrible puns for 11 minutes, 60 episodes, which totaled to two seasons. At an average of six puns per minute, that's almost 4,000 puns that the show has spat out. And not one of them is funny. Hey, 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 what's the matter? Can't you hear me? Maybe I should try yodeling. Yodely, 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 hee hoo. Okay, rule one about creating annoying characters. They should never annoy the audience. Or at the very least, they should annoy the characters within the show a lot more than they're annoying the audience. I can tell you right now that I am highly annoyed. Much more than Pear. This goes on for quite some time as Orange tries to get Pear to crack. I think that they're trying to make him more annoying than usual considering this episode's plot, but when the point of the entire concept of the show is to keep the Orange at 10 the entire time, it's really not possible to make him more annoying than usual. I just want a little quiet so I can read my book. Hey, is Gulliver an apple? Hey, he said the catchphrase. Am I done yet? Gulliver's not an apple! Then how come he keeps traveling all over the place like Johnny Appleseed? But Johnny Appleseed wasn't an apple. He was a person. And he wasn't the only person to travel around the world. Th these puns are awful. They don't even make sense in pun logic. I mean, that might be the point of the show, but that's not a good point to have. Para tells Orange to start traveling like Gulliver. And it might just be me, but the animation is really starting to creep me out. The actors doing this barely hit the emotion they're supposed to convey. And half the time they're just leaving their mouth open for no apparent reason. So far, the show has been creepy animation, bad puns, and yodeling. Pixel Pinky has more substance than this. What else have you got for me? You know what the journey plot 
spot, you're actually supposed to do things with each location? When you don't do that, it's kinda... What's the word? Oh yeah, BORING! The story in this episode is completely choppy. Orin dressed by a campfire in the desert when he hears a coyote. Instead of actually having a conflict, nothing happens. Even in what's supposed to be a comedy story, you need to have at least some kind of conflict. Chocolate with nuts from Spongebob, for example. The conflict is that Spongebob and Patrick are having a hard time getting anyone to buy their chocolates. Here, Orange wants to go on travel, because he does. Nothing gets in the way, and very few things even come close to trying to stop him. What I'm saying is that G3 MLP has more conflict than this show. I said it, and I'm sticking to it. Orange comes to an orange grove. Guess what happens? He makes a bunch of puns and then runs off. Now that the journey is over three minutes in, not much in the episode actually is going to happen. Orange comes across a bunch of tennis balls, and the animation on them is even creepier. Back at home, Pear is happy they've got rid of Orange. Why is his drink garnished with a lemon? That's very confusing. So a cherry wants to know where Orange is. And the cherry freaks out because last time, Orange got into a pirate ship that was sunk, and he was kidnapped by miniature oranges. At the very least, they've got the reference down, I'll give them that. But seriously, why do you guys care about Orange at all? Seriously, this is one question I, I, I would like to know when it comes to the logic behind all of these shows. Why do these ultra-annoying characters from any of these stupid cartoons have anyone tolerate them ever? If a real person acted anything close to any of these characters, they'd be ostracized immediately. And no, keeping them around is not funny. I messed up! I let Orange go into the world by himself! And how is that our problem? We gotta go find him! Then how come you want to find him so bad, orange lover? Uh, because he owes me five bucks. First of all, the animation keeps getting worse. That expression almost fell off the grapefruit. Second of all, do you get punished or something if Orange gets killed while you're watching him? I mean, he posed a really good question here. It seems like no one really cares what happens to Orange, except for Pear. And he only cares because the plot demands it. They get a letter that says that Orange has gone off to live with the yellow oranges, because apparently an orange can write. Then an old banana says that the place of the yellow oranges is the worst place in the world, but he does not tell them where it is. That's okay though, because they all magically know where Orange went, and they go through the exact same set pieces where the exact same things happen. Mostly nothing. Because reference or something, Terra leads them to the tennis center. Here, Orange is considered king of the yellow oranges because if the natives don't eat you in this kind of story, they turn you into the king. Then they eat you. These tennis balls are portrayed as the most brainless things in the universe that have pretty much no mind whatsoever. As such, they're the only things within the episode to laugh at Orange's jokes. Apple dies because I'm assuming that that's a running gag. Is where Orange wants to live? He's a lunatic. No, he's not. He's an orange. Sorry! So okay, considering you're playing the crickets here, please, almighty show, enlighten me. Why is that one pun there worse than every other pun the show has ever spat out? I might be stupid, but I cannot tell the difference at all between that pun and every other pun in the episode. I really need you to spell this out for me. Because Orange is stupid or delusional, he thinks that he's a tennis ball and he wants to go out into the tennis machine. Then, this writing gets from bare bones to completely stupid. The tomato calls in tomato ninjas who stop the orange from getting into the launcher. And then orange throws the tomatoes into it and they get exploded on the wall. Before orange gets launched by the tennis balls, Pear comes in and saves him. Yay. This is all my fault. Nah, -uh, it's your double fault. Get it? Serving up tennis puns. <laughs> but the little bits of this plot that are there absolutely rely on you not knowing anything about tennis. It's clearly established that Orange doesn't know what tennis is. You know what, this, is, this isn't even worth any sort of thought. It's the, my, my brain hurts. Th they really gave this guy a show. I mean, in every single episode of the web series, you're just waiting for the knife to come after him. And then when you realize it doesn't, you, re you, you wonder what you're doing with your life. And then you get really depressed and... Never mind. I'm going to relax with some Fruit Ninja while enjoying a nice bowl of fruit salad that I am going to grievously make myself. And I am going to go absolutely psycho with that knife. You know, if the guy behind the show wanted to make some money, he should think of doing a collaboration or some kind of licensing thing with the people behind Fruit Ninja. He'd make an absolute killing.
Well, this one has been a long time coming. While this didn't necessarily factor into my decision to do this review, I will say that the Annoying Orange Cartoon Network show was one of my most requested things to review, like, ever. And upon watching an episode or two, I can see why. If you asked me what was the worst thing that Cartoon Network ever did, I'd say the problem solvers. But the biggest mistake they ever made was perhaps to put this show on the air. You see, at the time, Nickelodeon gave Fred, the most popular YouTube celebrity, a movie and his own television show. This worked out horribly. The movie was panned, the show bombed, and even the web series reputation started heading down afterwards. For some reason, Cartoon Network wanted to rip off this brilliant move and gave a cartoon series to another rising YouTube concept, The Annoying Orange. What do I think about the web series? Well, it's about a character who has been titled Annoying. He spends most of every episode annoying other fruits until they brutally get killed by a knife. It's pretty much always the same, and most of the jokes were puns. Let's just say I really wasn't into it. However, I will say this. At the very least, the videos averaging around 3-4 to four minutes didn't overstay their welcome for what the show tried to do. So the best improvement that a network could make was to make each episode three times longer and slow down any sense of jokes or pacing to a screeching halt. Whatever I think about the web series, the Cartoon Network version is much, much worse. Let's start out with the most surprising thing that they made worse, the animation. I'm not talking about the backgrounds or anything, I'm talking about the character animations. How does a show with network backing end up looking like five times worse than something that was privately funded on the internet? The actual web series used real fruit and just sort of did a weird clutch cargo thing on them. Most of the show is made out of clip out animation and that never looks good ever. I've never seen it look good. Not once have I ever seen it look good. On top of that, this adds to the already creepy factor of just having live action faces hovering on top of fruit. Give Breadwinners this. At least the actual cartoon is animated better than the web version. Like most cartoons, this one has a theme song. It is absolutely terrible. I'm sorry, but your singing is just off. The lyrics are shit, and the genre is about 20 years out of date. This episode begins with all the fruit playing volleyball with Pear, this show's resident Megward the Wizard, looking for a place to rest. Yeah, you know most of the fruits the Annoying Orange has come across in his travels? Their fate ends up essentially being cut to pieces by a knife in a brutal fashion. This doesn't happen to Pear because it would be a lot nicer than forcing him to live around Orange. And apparently, beating a guy when he's down is the perfect recipe for comedy. Isn't that right, Eric? Oh no. Hey Pear, it's me, Orange! Yes, hi Orange. I get the point of the character is to have the orange as annoying as possible, I get that. And they have done an absolute...